So that's what, what validating tests are really about, about the details of your concept, the design and user friendliness of your concept. And that's why you use hypothesis. So you set up your hypothesis to see which one is more successful. So maybe you have a hypothesis about color. So you're supposing that green converts better than blue or gives you a better user experience or something like that. It might be the place of certain buttons or functions or, or things to uh, uh, validate with your, with your customers. And these hypotheses really help you to measure after that. So this uh, kind of testing is more quantitative. Um, and also the questions that you use within these tests are more precise, more detailed and more down to earth. So, for example, how many times do you think this you will use this function uh, or this feature? Um, is this statistic insightful to you? What do you think will happen when you press this button? Uh, can you find some information? How many clicks do you need? So it's really about the details. And as you can see, uh, explorative and validating tests are not mutually exclusive, but still you focus more on the design and on the user experience within these validating tests. And they help you to finally shape your product to something that would really be successful in the market. So the first is usability testing. And uh, with this, this kind of testing, uh, you use a prototype, of course, and you give your user tasks. So, for example, turn on this machine, uh, check your inbox, uh, buy product X or something like that. Um, find a product with this and that feature. So you are, you are measuring if the customer can do these tasks and how much effort he needs to put in, if he understands or he needs to use very many clicks and very many thoughts, or if it's very easy for him. And that will give you insight into how your product, what your product should look like, how it should, how it should work for the uh, customer in order to really uh, uh, have a satisfying customer experience and not confuse the customers because confused customers are not going to buy. So you're uh, investigating um, if you're giving the customer tasks. First, does he understand how many steps does he need to do this tasks, task? Um, does he do it well at once or does he need to kind of search and go with the process? Um, is there a shortcut that is missing? Maybe uh, you can always ask in general with this this test in specific but in general with all tests your users to think out loud because that will really give you insight into what's confusing and what's easily to easy to understand so that's really helpful for you to get your insights and measure your results now the second is about test card test cards and these test cards are designed by strategizer which is the company of alexander osterwalder um, they're very useful because they're very focused on measuring and to see if your hypothesis is right so you set up a first hypothesis we believe that that's what you're assuming that's that's your hypothesis and you can also indicate how critical this one is so if this is something that if it turns out to be invalidated, um, you really need to turn out your turn around your value proposition or if you can kind of keep going. So how critical is your hypothesis in order to verify that you will do something, you will do an experiment, you will ask your user to buy a product on your website, you will ask your user to find the inbox in your application um, so you will have an experiment and these this experiment you can also indicate the cost of the experiment and the data reliability so how much how reliable are the data the insights that you get from this test 
So does it really influence your hypothesis and the reliability of your hypothesis and how confident you can be at the results or not? Then afterwards, step three is measuring it. So you will measure something. So for example, we will give a task to the customer. We will give them the task to find product X and buy it on our website. And we will measure how many click, clicks he needs or how much time he needs. So uh, you can also set up the time requirement for this, for this experiment. And we are right if, so you can say, for example, uh, we are right if within five clicks, each of the users or 80% of the users is able to buy product X on my website. Usually this comes with a percentage. So maybe not everybody will get it right away, but if most people get it really well, then it would, then it's probably really quite clear still. So um, you mostly get a percentage. If 80%, 90% of the users is able to do something, then uh, there might be a couple of exceptions, uh, but uh, it is still right. So then there's focus groups. So uh, this is really about facilitation, whereas in the other experiments, you uh, maybe you uh, uh, give users a chance to really interact with each other or with your prototype. You don't speak so much. With a focus group, you really facilitate and you get an interaction between the user uh, and your prototype. So you can ask the participants to have this interaction and to talk to each other, to talk out, uh, think out loud and also talk to each other and to kind of get a collective understanding of your prototype and how it works and how it could become better. So um, you could uh, also work with the top three benefits, the top three disadvantages, for example, to get some insight into how uh, you could improve your product. And when you get kind of this collective process, you really need to facilitate it, but you can really get a lot of information and a lot of tips about how to improve uh, within this fo focus group. Now there's also a B testing, and this comes from technological entrepreneurship. So basically uh, they do this, for example, with websites a lot. And if you see very large companies, technolo technological companies, they do loads of A-B testing. So for example, they change the color of the buy now button, or they change the font of the website test uh, text or they change the place of a certain picture or something like that. And you measure it quantitatively with your customers. So uh, for example, you give five customers version A and five customers version B, and then you get to see which one converts better. So these big companies, they do it all the time and they always find kind of improvements, small improvements, very incremental improvements, but they really, make a better value proposition out of that when they all uh, add it all up. So uh, take care that you always change one variable at a time, only one, just to check if that has an influence. And once you get clarity about that, then you can go to the next. Now, once you have a, a test group product in the market, something that's very, very useful is also the net promoter score. The net promoter score is kind of the functional alternative to asking people if they like your product. If, if you ask directly whether people like your product, you get a lot of social, uh, socially uh, desired answers. And if you ask how much would you promote this product to your uh, friends, how much would you re refer this product to your friends? Then you get a more honest answer because people don't want to look bad in front of their friends. So they only recommend very good things. Now the, rep the net promoter score, you could use it on a scale from one to 10. So how much would you recommend this product to your friends? One to six are distractors. So people who really don't like the product. 
Now, seven and eight are people who like the product but are not really enthusiastic about it. And nine and 10 are called promoters. So these are people who are really very enthusiastic. It really solves a problem for them and they really want their friends to be happy about it as well, as happy as they are themselves. So uh, that's the indication that, that they're really, uh, really enthusiastic about it. Now, what you would want to do with your prototype is to get as many people to the nine to, nine to 10 score as possible. So again, here you might want to segment your market a little bit further. So maybe you can define people who give you a nine to 10 and pe that have certain things in common, certain characteristics in common, and the other ones who don't. And they might give you a number lower than, than, uh, than nine. So you might want to segment your market more, or you might want to improve your value proposition based on the feedback that you're getting from that. Now, of course, this is a very good way to start digging in as well. So uh, you can ask people, would you recommend it? Well, why do you give the number that you're giving? Why a seven or why an eight? What are you missing? to really, really be enthusiastic about it. If you're digging into that, then you get more and more insights about how you can improve your value proposition or the way you, you uh, uh, get to your customer segments. 